Hi, I'm Christopher Isle of Milestone Systems. In the first part of this video, I'll show you how to connect analog cameras, like this one here, to Xprotect Go. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how easy it is to integrate Xprotect Go with an analog CCTV system, so they run in parallel, which is a really good way of evaluating the benefits of using an IP VMS. But let's start by looking at the difference between an analog and an IP based CCTV system. The upper part of this diagram shows a simple traditional analog network with a couple of cameras, a recorder, and a dedicated network of coax cables carrying the analog signals from the cameras to the recorder. Underneath is the corresponding IP video solution. As you can see, the dedicated coax network is simply replaced by a general purpose IP network. Connecting analog cameras to an IP system like Xprotect Go is easy. The main difference between connecting IP cameras is the extra step of converting the analog signal to a digital signal. This is done using an encoder like this one here, that you connect between the analog camera and Xprotect Go. Many encoders support multiple analog inputs that are converted to different channels in the encoder. This one here supports four analog cameras or channels. There are others that support up to 32 and 40 channels in one unit. If you want to check if Xprotect Go supports the encoder you have or the one you're planning to buy, you can find a complete list of all the devices we support on the Milestone website. Before you can start connecting the analog cameras to Xprotect Go, you need to make sure the various network components are connected correctly on the network level. Here's a closer look at the basic setup, with the encoder used as a bridge between the analog cameras, the IP network, and the PC that is running your Xprotect Go software. IP addresses are used to manage the net communication in the data network and the communication between the PC and the encoder. Each device connected to the network has its own unique IP address. The specific network addresses will, of course, depend on the actual network implementation and will therefore vary from network to network. Viewed in real physical terms, the small network we saw in the diagram has these components. Here we have an analog camera which has a coax cable carrying the analog video signal. This is the encoder that converts the analog signal to a digital video signal. And here is the network switch that shifts data packages from one IP address to another. It connects the encoder and possibly other IP cameras to the PC over here, which is running the Xprotect Go. When you connect the encoder, it is important you have the right IP address settings, otherwise Xprotect Go will not be able to communicate with the cameras. This means you may need to change the encoder's default IP address so it can connect on your network. There's no standard way of doing this, so it's simply a question of following the instructions provided by the encoder's manufacturer. Most encoders also have built-in configuration possibilities, and again, you'll have to follow the instructions provided by the manufacturer if you want to change these. What's worth remembering, however, is that once the encoder is connected to Xprotect Go, you can access all these settings directly via Xprotect Go. But I'll show you how to do this in another video about advanced configuration settings. Right. Once the physical network and the network configuration is ready, we can go ahead and connect the encoder and the analog cameras to Xprotect Go. And this is done using the management application so let's start the application. If you have seen the video about how to connect USB cameras to Xprotect Go, you'll see we use the same procedure to connect analog cameras. Okay, so this is the management application. The easiest way to add an analog camera to the system is to use the Add Hardware Devices wizard here on the main screen of the management application. The Add Hardware Devices wizard offers a number of different ways to detect devices that can connect to the system. The fastest way is to use the Express option. Once the scanning is completed and all devices have been detected by the system, you can decide which devices you actually want to enable in the system and assign names to these. Xprotect Go uses the manufacturer's default user and password credentials to access the encoder. If you have changed these settings, you'll need to provide this information to get the camera verified and accepted by the system. A smart automatic name generation function lets you quickly name the cameras so you can easily remember which is which. Here we want to use a naming convention that lets us define a custom text followed by the IP address of the device, device type, and a sequence number. You can also name your devices manually on an individual basis. So now your IP cameras are connected and you can complete the wizard by clicking finish. 
After that, you can close the management application, and when you do that, you'll be prompted to save your changes. And that's all it takes to add analog cameras to XProtect Go. The system offers a lot of other camera configuration options, like motion detection and so on, but I'll show you how to use these in a separate video. Now let's check that the cameras are available in the Smart Client. Like the management application, you launch the XProtect Smart Client from the Windows Start menu or by double-clicking the shortcut on your desktop. A login dialog box will appear and you need to make sure the following information is specified. The server address is localhost because the software is running on this PC. You're using basic authentication, which simply means the user is only registered in XProtect Go. The default username is admin and so is the password. If you've used XProtect software before and to find another username or password, you should of course use these. If this is the first time you open the Smart Client, the newly added analog cameras will be available in a default view created by the system, as you can see here. However, if you've already used the Smart Client together with, for example, USB cameras, you need to manually add the new analog cameras to a view in the Setup tab. If you want more information on the Smart Client, there's a good video about it on our website. In the beginning of this video, I promised to show you how you can easily connect your existing analog CCTV system together with XProtect Go. This is a really easy, low-cost way to evaluate Milestone's IP video management software. And all you need is a simple splitter, like this one here, that you mount on the cables from the cameras. The splitter takes the signals from the cameras here and sends it out through these two connectors here. So, here we have a DVR with our analog camera connected to it. Let's see how it works. All you have to do is unplug the camera from the DVR, plug in the splitter instead, there, plug the camera back in again to the splitter, to one end of the splitter, then you take a new coax cable, plug that into the other end of the splitter, and the other end into your encoder, which in turn is plugged into the switch which is connected to the PC which is running the XProtect Go software. And that's it. This setup lets you experience XProtect Go in your analog CCTV network with no risk and very little cost. I hope you've enjoyed this video and can see how easy it is to connect analog cameras to XProtect Go. If you have questions about which encoder to use or how to best configure your IP network, I can recommend contacting an authorized milestone reseller. There are literally thousands of them around the world and you can find a complete list, including the one closest to you, via the upgrade section for XProtect Go on our website, which you'll find at this URL, www.milestonesys.com go. Thanks for watching. I look forward to telling you more about XProtect Go in the next video.